This is a video request from Johnny. Many drugs for MS work on the immune system, but this new investigational drug works on metabolism in the cell. I've spoken about CNM AU8 before, but now we have new data. How effective was it over three years in the phase two extension study? I'll include a link to the prior video in the notes below, but I'll give a brief overview. This is a drug for the purists because it's literally just gold, as in not bronze, not silver, but simply the metal gold. But it's specifically manufactured into tiny gold nanoparticles that are clean surfaced and they're in medical grade water. And they're extraordinarily small so they can actually get into the cell and provide metabolic support. Each particle is only 68,000 or so atoms and each nanocrystal is only 13 nanometers in diameter. A nanometer is one billionth of a meter and it's a drinkable oral solution. By the way, my name is Brandon Bieber. I make videos about MS every Wednesday. This is what an individual nanoparticle looks like under an electron microscope. And this is what the product looks like. Not exactly the most appetizing, but this is an investigational drug. Perhaps they'll make it look prettier if it comes onto the market. How exactly does CNM AU8 work? Well, we don't know for sure, but these are some theoretical mechanisms of action. We we know gold is an excellent conductor of electrons and within the cell it may facilitate organic chemical reactions providing metabolic support and we know metabolic derangement is part of the pathogenesis of multiple sclerosis. For example, many reactions in the cell involve the molecule NADH and its oxidation to NAD+. This is French if you don't have a background in biology and chemistry, but just take my word for it. This is a very important molecule in organic chemistry and involved in various processes throughout the cell. It's also thought that CNM AU8 could have antioxidant effects, preventing oxidative damage, and it may also stimulate oligodendrocytes. These are the cells in the central nervous system that produce myelin to actually create it. However, the drug is rapidly excreted by the liver into the bile and so it must be taken continuously or it's depleted very quickly. There are various basic science studies on this drug. This is one in human cultured cells, not in actual organisms, just in cell culture. And they're looking at adenosine triphosphate, a store of energy within the cell. If you look at the green bars, these are different doses of CNM AU8 or different concentrations versus the gray bar, vehicle or placebo you can see regardless of how you look at ATP, total, mitochondrial, or glycolytic, there's an increase in the cells that have the drug, suggesting more available energy. So let's take a look at the phase two visionary MS extension trial results. This was a study in people with relapsing remitting MS. There is a separate study on progressive MS beyond the scope of this video. And these are people with stable disease, in other words, no relapses in the last six months. And that's that's important because people with recent relapses are often improving spontaneously, which can confound the results. Ages 18 to 55 with some kind of chronic vision problem due to MS because one of the outcomes was vision, so they wanted people to have some visual impairment. The mean age in the study was 38.7, and 70% were women matching the overall demographics of MS, but 95% were white, so not very good representation of other ethnicities in this particular study. The baseline mean EDSS, Expanded Disability Status Scale, this is a measure of disability in MS used in research, was 1.75. That's very low, so most of these people didn't have significant disability. Mean years from diagnosis was 5.5. They didn't have MS that long. Mean months from recent relapse, 49. In other words, they didn't have recent relapses. And they looked at two different doses, CNM AU8 15 milligrams once daily and 30 milligrams once daily versus placebo. And in the extension phase, they use the 30 milligram dose. So that's what we'll be looking at today. Now, more than 90% of these people were already on disease modifying therapies. 53% were on the drugs Ocrevus, Tysabri, and Rituximab, which are stronger drugs. So we're really looking for non-inflammatory effects of CNM AU8 because these people should have suppression of relapses and new MRI 
my lesions most likely. The original study was 48 weeks, but they did an extension phase of an additional 96 weeks, meaning you were no longer randomized to drug or placebo. Everyone got the drug, and we'll see how they did over three years. This was a small study. They had difficulty recruiting because it was during the COVID-19 pandemic. They originally randomized 73 people in the original trial, but only 55 enrolled in the long-term extension. 41 of those originally got one of the two doses of CNMAU8 versus 14 who got placebo, and they all got 30 milligrams of CNMAU8 in the extension phase. So now we move to the results. The first thing they looked at is low contrast visual acuity. This is a special eye chart where the letters are grayed out. What you're seeing on the image doesn't quite do it justice, and it's difficult to see and very sensitive to changes due to optic neuritis. So when we look at the results, what you're seeing is change from baseline. So at the baseline, the beginning of the study, that's how many letters the person could read, and you can say they improved, they could read more letters. And these are the people who originally got the drug, and so they've been on CNMAU8 the entire time. And by the end, at the end, they could read around eight more letters, a significant improvement, but it's actually total letters for both eyes. So one eye could be a normal eye, and the other eye could be visually impaired due to optic neuritis. So everything to the left of the dotted line is in the double blind period, so they were getting either 15 milligrams or 30 milligrams of CNMAU8, and after that, everyone is getting 30 milligrams, everyone's unblinded, they know they're getting the drug, and you can see they kind of improve steadily the whole time. One other thing to note is they use something called least squared mean change. What that means is the dot you're seeing at each point of data is not simply an average, what I would have used, but it's actually a regression which tends to kind of avoid extremes because when you have a data point that's very far from the mean, if you square it, it ends up being pretty far. So this tries to smooth things out, but it can be a little bit deceiving. But certainly, it would be something fairly similar if they just used the simple average. Now, if we go to people who originally got placebo, you can see to the left of the dotted line, everyone's on placebo, and they still improved a little bit, only about 2.5 to 3 letters versus 5 letters. But by the end of the study, they were pretty much doing as well as people who had been on the drug the whole time. And that suggests this may not be a disease-modifying therapy. It may not change the course of the disease, but maybe causes improvement. But there really wasn't a huge difference in the blinded phase. And of course, there could be some effect with practice and the placebo effect. Here we're looking at all the participants plotted individually, and these are simply the changes from baseline to the final visit of the study. And on the left is people who got CNMAU8 the whole time, and on the right is people who got placebo, and then changed to CNMAU8. And you can see on the average, they both improved by about eight letters or four letters per I on average. And as a former rater in these trials who's actually administered the test, I would say that's fairly significant. I remember people being being almost exactly the same on follow-up visits. There really wasn't a big change in most people. There are some outliers. One person improved by 38 letters, which is absolutely absurd. And there are some people who got worse, but not many. On average, they improved. Is this the placebo effect? Is it practice? Or is it a real biological effect? Next, we move to cognitive function. These are the results of the symbol digit modalities test. This is a cognitive test used in MS research. You're presented with a key. There are different symbols that correspond to numbers. Then you're presented with a bunch of symbols, and you have to write in the numbers as fast as you can. It First, you're looking back and forth, but over time you memorize them and you go faster and faster and do as many as you can within a specific length of time. It's not necessarily a great measure of overall cognitive function, really just processing speed, but that can be impaired in multiple sclerosis and can be quite disabling if significant. These are the results. First, we'll look at people who got CNMAU8 the whole time. So to the left of the dotted line is the double blind phase, and after that is the open label extension phase. Everyone's unblinded, everyone's getting the drug. And again, you're looking at the change from baseline. In this case, the improvement from baseline. Now they did use the least squared mean change. Again, they're minimizing the distance of the 
individual dots from the center, kind of like linear regression. I would prefer they just use simple averages, but it's probably not hugely different. You know, you can see people steadily improve throughout the study, but the difference of about eight letters, honestly, that could be just practice. People do get better at this test over time. It's not that impressive of a difference, but they did improve. If you look at people who originally got placebo, they didn't improve quite as much at the beginning, but we're talking about a difference of two or three letters. And by the end, once they're on the drug, they caught up. Again, if you look at all the data, these are just individual people, and now their mean change from their individual change from baseline, I should say. And you can see most people improve whether they originally got CNM AU8 and continued on it the whole time, or if they changed from placebo. And you can see we're talking about a difference of five to eight uh, correct answers. And this is not a huge difference. It could easily just be from practice. And there was no difference, again, suggesting CNM AU8 may not be a disease modifying therapy. Whether or not you got the drug in the first year didn't matter that much, but perhaps it has some benefit in symptoms. Let's look at the side effects of the drug. They had a total of 82.9 patient years of exposure. This is just the number of patients times the average length of exposure. There were some common adverse events, upper respiratory tract infections, urinary tract infections, headaches, but also some severe events. One person had a heart attack, a non-ST elevation myocardial infarction, kind of a minor heart attack. Two people had kidney stones, one had pneumonia, one had diverticulitis, one had neutropenia. This is low neutrophils, a type of white blood cell, can be serious. Although all of these people improve, it's unclear if these were related to the drug. The investigators thought they were probably unrelated random events. It's hard to say with this small sample size. Here is a comment from one of the investigators, Dr. Michael Barnett from the University of Sydney. These observed long-term clinical improvements for participants with stable disease over and above background immunomodulatory disease modifying therapy are unprecedented. The data show clear overall improvements in vision and cognition for participants treated for nearly three years from randomization. Importantly, these results were robust and consistent positive impacts on disease progression and the potential to at least partially reverse established disability if confirmed in a larger study represent a major therapeutic leap for patients with MS. I personally wouldn't be quite so optimistic. I'll say I'm interested but skeptical. The results of the cognitive outcomes, SDMT, not so impressive to me, but the visual acuity, low contrast visual acuity, I do think there may be something there. Certainly this warrants a phase three trial, but to know if it works, we would simply have to do a long-term randomized trial with a larger sample size. Now I'll show you the price of the stock. This is clean nanotherapeutics and you can see it's down over 95% and the whole company is worth only $43 million, which is very low for a pharmaceutical company. Even one successful MS drug could be worth hundreds of millions. The reason for this may be due to the failure of this same drug in an ALS trial. And although I would like to see a phase three trial, they may not even have the capital. They would probably have to get the funding for it. So to be honest, we may never see it. However, there is an ongoing phase two trial in progressive MS. This is repair MS in non-active progressive MS, and they're looking at brain energy metabolites just to prove that the drug has effects in the actual brain, and there's some clinical outcomes as well. So I'm definitely interested to see this for a group of people with progressive MS who, generally speaking, has less options. I'd be interested to know, are you excited about CNM AU8? Would you consider entering a phase three trial? It's likely safer than a lot of other MS therapeutics, and you would get to stay on your existing immunologic drug in the clinical trial. So I would imagine they could recruit it fairly easily. It's just very expensive to do these trials. I certainly love to see new different drugs that work with unique mechanisms. And as usual, let me know if you have any ideas for other videos.